Hey now, is this Star Wars Rebel Assault or Jaguar XJ220 for the Sega CD? What's most remarkable about this game is how similar it is to a Jaguar. It's stylish, elegant, sophisticated, beautiful. And it stopped working after five minutes. Now, to be fair, it's a 1993 release on the Sega CD, but the last time I sat in a Jaguar, the check engine light went on as I shut the door. But it was such a good-looking, sophisticated car, and I find that carried through all of the menu screens in this game, like the elegant cat gracefully walking over the items on the Jaguar which have broken and need to be fixed. Who's gonna pay for that? Well, if you could afford a Jaguar XJ220, it didn't matter. That's a tough car. The XJ220 was Jaguar's answer to the Ferrari F40 and Porsche 959. Frankly, I'm surprised to see that it got its own game. And after a trip to the mechanic and tapping on the Sega CD player a few times, I got the game working again. It's very playable and responsive on the Sega CD and has a certain Jaguar-style elegance to it, but suffers from some flaws which prevent it from being great. Most notably, my biggest disappointment is in the track design. They're, they're just flat-out boring. It generally plays very well, and it looks good, it runs smoothly, but when you get into some of the sharp corners, it's as if the game needs analog controls, because if you break too much, you'll just stop. If you break too little, you'll run into the wall, and there's like no in-between. Probably the best way to play the game is to break really early and then sort of uh, flutter the pedal, <laughs> the button on your Genesis controller, hit it repeatedly uh, until the Jaguar starts leaking something and explodes. To say the game feels like it was inspired by Sega's arcade classic OutRun is a bit of an understatement. The XJ220 comes with a CD player, unlike the crappy 8-track in that OutRun Ferrari. But that's where the Jaguar domination ends, because the game is so mediocre compared to OutRun. And even if it generally plays well and looks nice, it's kind of boring. Even though there's a variety of different background designs and courses that take place all over the world, Jaguar XJ220 lacks a sense of excitement that is found in other old-school driving games like OutRun, Top Gear, Rad Racer, Super Monaco GP, and even Test Drive 2 The Duel. There's, there's just something missing, but don't underestimate how remarkably smooth it is for a 16-bit game. Technically, it's very solid and very playable. I like that you can even save your game if you're in the championship mode. Seriously, you can turn off your Genesis and come back later and just continue playing after you load your game. No passwords or anything. It's the future! It also has a track editor and Jaguar XJ220 looks nice too. It's a good looking game. There's no other car licenses, so all of the other cars that you'll be racing against are fictional. They're not based upon any other real-life cars, though. Not that I can tell. The Ferino? What, what is that? That looks kind of like a Buick Roadmaster. Seriously, they, they should have just called these cars like the Lamborghini or Porsche Audi. Except for this one. I like the Rooster Head logo. I want that car. I think if you had this game when it was new, back in 1993, it would have been awesome. But in a way, it raises the bar too high and makes me expect more from it. Go. It's playable, it looks nice, it's got cool cars in it. It saves games, it has a track editor, championship mode, but something about it just really isn't all that exciting. Odds are, if you're collecting games like this, you're not pinching your pennies anyway, but if you are, I would steer you towards OutRun, Rad Racer, or Top Gear. Jaguar XJ220, unlike the real car, does not cost very much these days to buy. I have to thank Frank in California for the donation, thank you again.
At this point, Jaguar XJ220 is either for those who remember the game way back in the day and want to relive the experience, or for those collecting driving games on the Sega CD. It's not bad, but it's not as good as it could be either. Now this is a fancy car, so uh, you know I was hoping it would do some cool things like run over bystanders watching the race, which sadly it doesn't do, but check this out. All of these people are making out in the trailers while watching auto racing. Incidentally, they're all wearing the exact same clothes, too. Kind of creepy.